Bliss or Lucifer did not want to bow to him. That's who the so-called Freemasons, because the Freemasons, you have to recognize that 1776 and even a little prior before that, that, that that's the European, the York Rite and the Scottish Rite. His Imperial Majesty is not of the York Rite. His Imperial Majesty is not of the so-called Scottish Rite. Yes, they gave him props and accolades, of course, because they were caught. You understand, the Imperial Majesty had caught them by surprise and caught them suddenly and manifested on them. That's what you see in the pictures. All of them, these big high leaders bowing to this five foot four inch tall man from Ethiopia who happens to be the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the King of Kings of Ethiopia, the elect of God upon the throne of David, and all of them are bowing. But now black peoples, many of them were blinded. They didn't see this. They didn't recognize this. They turned their backs to the so-called civil rights and the Negro Uncle Tom leaders. They turned their backs to so that's one level of the covert warfare against the Beta Israel, against the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's one level of it. Now we have a next level that went on in Ethiopia. If you remember this, it's like the Kennedy assassination. They shot Kennedy from three separate vantage points. It was known years ago, but it took a while for it to really come out almost simultaneously from three vantage points. Could I represent three different orders of the so-called neo-Roman or the, the Eurocentric Freemasonic lodges? You understand? Re representing the DC Lodge. You understand? Representing the London Lodge or the London Lodge, the Lords of London, and, and representing the, the Vatican or the Vatican. You understand those so-called Jesuits? They shot him from three different points of view. Now you say three, it's like a trinity. Well, that's the devil's trinity, and the Bible shows you that the devil has a trinity too. And and see, people would be talking about like the Star of David or what they saw the Seal of Solomon, and this is evil and devilish, and we shouldn't wear this. Because look, the devil uses the devil uses everything, and you use the devil's system. You know what I mean? So when you talk about let's stop using the devil's thing, stop using the dollar bills. The dollar bills have more spells on it than a basic six-pointed star. You understand that has not been powered or, or ha no one has put their own will on it. You understand above whatever will that you put on it. You have to understand how these things work. You understand on, on that level. You understand that's why it says to make our wills obedient to good influences. To good influences is, is to show the greatest wisdom. But in order to follow this aim, one must be guided by hymenote. The translation says religion, but it really means hymenote, which means living faith. You understand? Or living faiths from faith to faith. Because we go from faith to faith. Now that has to be explained because some people think that means we go from so-called one religion to the next. But they don't understand what the word amen means. We go into that in another in another episode or another video, you understand, when we touch more in detail on what our main means from its real biblical, spiritual, historical roots. You over this? But let's go forward a little bit with this and we'll touch more on these elements. We have to break down these elements for you so you can really do your own homework and recognize how all these things come together. But when you say his Imperial Majesty is a Freemason, you know, we have people say his Imperial Majesty is a Freemason. Actually, the Freemasons are copying the true order of his Imperial Majesty or the order that his Imperial Majesty inherits by being that branch or that Netzer or that Nazir, that branch. That's what Nazir means. So when we say Nazirite, you have to understand the full level of the meaning Nazirite. Turn your Bibles for a moment to pro, uh, not Proverbs, we'll touch on Proverbs, but let's go to Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 118. But people take the Bible, you know, take the word like it's like it's a joke or something. You understand? Like like it's it's yeah, the Bible has a couple of good things in it, but basically it's all about love. You know what I'm saying? That that's some devil's philosophy, and don't let them feel you out softly. You understand? Verse twenty two of Psalms one eighteen it says, The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. I want you to recognize that the stone which the builders refuse is become the headstone or the head of the corner or the cornerstone. And that's his imperial majesty. The stone which the builders refuse. You see, they want to have the so-called new world order. You understand? But they've created it on disorder. You understand? It's not a new world order. It's really a new world slaughter. 
Yovas, it's not global warming, it's really global harming. You understand? So they mix you up and confuse you with these words and these phrases that you buy into and you do not really even analyze and study these words. Earlier, Rastafari spoke about word, sound, and power and wasn't in this little kindergarten in an infantile way that a lot of ones and ones do it right now. And, and it's not really their fault because a lot of the so-called elders either never knew the truth or never conveyed that to them. Because you have to remember that a lot of the elders from like the, the 60s and 70s, they thought the world was going to end around the time of the Ethiopian revolution or the creeping coup. Look at that right there, the creeping coup. What creeps? A serpent, a snake. It moves sideways. You understand? A serpent or a snake, it creeps. No, 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 let's overstand this or it moves on its belly, but that's a creeping motion to ancient people that was creeping. Now, overstand this for a moment. When we go to Genesis, we find that there are two seeds. In other words, two races. And it's not, it goes beyond just the white and black kind of ratio. That worked for, for a season, dispensation. This whole white supremacy, white black issue, that was a dispensation. That dispensation ended with his imperial majesty, but the iniquity and rebellion of many is not over. So they continue to continue to do the same thing. And now black people get into that, you know, in black supremacy versus white supremacy. So they figure that whatever the white people do, we're going to do. You understand? So you, you like get even with them and then you know better than them. So you get judged right along with them. And then the devil's laughing at you and Tartaros, you understand, or Gehenna. You understand because you bought into that lie. You see, so we're just here to warn you. You understand? Know we're here to give you a warning. You understand? Know Fear warning. You see, the good news must be preached, must be proclaimed. And then the end of this age will come. That's why we are so diligent about it. You understand? Know and if you knew what was best for you, you would learn what this is about and also be about it as well. You understand? Know because people want to know that they're ready for action. They're, they said they're ready for action. The first thing, 46 and 10 Psalms, what does it say? It says, be still Ki anoki Elohim. Learn what that means. Be still and know. You understand? Be still, not and have faith. You should have done have have had faith. You understand? And have learned. You understand? And have grown. You understand? So now you are free because you know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's why people are so offended when we speak out on Obama or whatever like that, because they're putting their soul, their psyche, their hopes on this political system. And they're buying into the very system. They're talking about fire burn the CIA, so forth and so on. Who, who's protecting Obama? Who do you think is protecting him? It's not a bunch of rosters or whatever like that. I mean, come on, let's, let's be real. You understand? If you want to vote for him, that's your free choice. You're free to do that. You understand? But, no, but now, check this out. The iniquity, those things that offend and them which do iniquity. What does the word say? Those which do iniquity... Rebellion, those who rebel against the king of kings. You see, another psalm also speaks about that Psalm 19, where it talks about the great transgression. If you look in the Jewish so-called Tehillim and the Psalms book, they basically tell you in the footnote, the great transgression is rebellion against the king of kings. And that's interesting in a Jewish book. You understand the so-called uh, so uh, Judaism scroll that they say in the footnote, king of kings. When the, the whole concept and idea of King of Kings, we take that to be a very so-called New Testament concept. You understand? They know the truth in that regard. Psalm, I mean, verse 42. Verse 42 says, And shall cast them, those things that offend, into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now, these things are very real. And we're going to study them in a little more in detail. But we're just going... Like, like fly over these things, get familiar with these things first, the words, and find out what these words really mean. Verse 43 says, Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun. So we're not like some of these ones and ones that get caught up with sun worship and everything else. We are going to shine forth, the Zadokan, the Zadokai, the Zadokan, the true ones of the order of Melchizedek, are going to shine forth as the Tahai or the Tai in the Mengisht of their Abba, of their father. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Now, to go a little deeper in this, let's go a little bit deeper in this right here. 
and let's understand what this really means at even another level. Now, the kingdom...